After the first video we did on hanging a single door, we had so many people asking questions about hanging pairs and about side lights and everything that we decided to do another program just on that. So I'm going to start with preparing the sill. That's the most critical part of hanging any door, but especially if you're hanging a pair or you're hanging a single with a couple of flanking side lights, the sill has to be perfectly level. program, we went through the whole system of shooting control lines and finding the high point of the floor before you set any doors, and that's really important too, but I want to cut right to the chase on this program. The first thing you have to do is make sure the sill is perfectly level, and I mean perfect. Not just level, but as straight as a string too. So let's take this piece out of here and let me show you this. When I set exterior doors, I always install a cant strip first. This is a piece of PVC that I ripped at a bevel, so it has a slope to it. And I like to install these on the rough sill before I flash it, before I do any waterproofing. And that way, when I put the waterproofing on top of the cant strip, any moisture that gets in here will flow to the outside. The other reason I like to use a cant strip is because it's three quarters of an inch thick in the back. It's about a quarter of an inch thick in the front and it's pretty stiff. So I can use it to pad up this opening. You gotta pad up almost every rough opening anyway. If you don't put some kind of padding underneath the sills on your prefit doors, sometimes the doors will end up too close to the finished floor. Sometimes they won't even open. So be careful. I like to get the doors up enough so that they'll clear a throw rug too once you install them. So I can use this cant strip as a pad too and I'll shim it so it's perfectly level. I'm going to put my R-beam on top of here and I can see this end needs to come up just a hair. That means I'll be able to take a shim and put it underneath that side. There. Now that is perfectly level. Now I can take another shim and I can set it in here and just fill in the rest of this so this pad is nice and solid. And then I'll put some screws through here. I'll put a screw through each side here. There we go. That is perfectly straight and flat and dead level. Now we're ready to waterproof this opening. So we're going to do that with some peel and stick flashing. Now, I'm not going to get into this in a big way. I don't want to take the time to peel the release paper off the back. But let me just show you a couple of techniques here. This is called a bow tie. The reason it's called a bow tie is because it looks just like a bow tie. That's why they call it a bow tie. And it goes right in the corner, right here. Now, I'm not going to pull the release paper off of here. I have to use this little set over and over again. So I'm just going to tack this in place real quick. So don't, don't send me emails or, or you know, call me on the phone and say, hey, how come you didn't release the paper off the back of that peel and stick? Do you always use a stapler to put it down? No, I don't use a stapler. I'm just using a stapler for this presentation. Usually, you're going to want to pull off the release paper or the stuff doesn't peel and stick. So we're going to put a bow tie on each side of the opening. One on that side and one on this side. I'm going to break these shims off so they're not in our way anymore. And let me tack this one down too. There. That'll hold those two bow ties in and you always want to put those bow ties in first so that when you put your flashing in, it kind of counter flashes the bow ties. Now the flashing you want to center in the opening. You want it to come up the legs on each side of the opening and you want it to come in till it's almost flush with the inside of the framing. And then, now I'm going to staple this down too. If I was really on a job site, I'd be pulling that release paper off. Then make a cut in your flashing on both sides and you'll be able to take your flashing and peel it around the corner and notice how that bow tie protects that little corner right there so you don't end up, you don't end up with a pinhole leak right in this corner.
Now that we've got this opening waterproof, we're almost ready to set the frame. The first thing we have to do is we have to shim it back to level. So I saved some pieces, the scrap that I had when I made that cant strip, and I'm going to use these to kind of counter shim this cant strip so I can bring it right back to level. Okay, so we're going to have to put another one of those over at this end, not all the way into the corner now. We want this thing to be able to drain out. Let me put a screw into this one. And then I'm going to put one in the middle too. Now if you're doing a big opening, like this one we're actually going to be working on, you'd want to put shims in about every, probably about every foot or so, but leave lots of areas like this so they can drain out. Now the last step before we set the jam in the opening is to run the sealant. Now I'm using OSI's Tech Seal here because it's a real sealant. This is the kind of product you want to look for. You want to use a professional grade sealant when you're installing windows and doors. One that has a lot of flexibility and that's a code requirement. And when you apply this, run a nice even bead of sealant all the way across the back edge of this cant strip about a half inch thick, almost flush with the framing on the inside of the wall. You don't want any of that sealant to be out here because then you'd be creating a dam. You want to create the dam at the inside of the wall so no moisture can get back inside of the house, but this cant strip can still drain out. Now we're ready to set the frame in this opening. We can take this Plastro frame that we built and put it inside the rough opening. Now the nice thing about prepping this opening properly, putting the cant strip in, getting it perfectly level, making sure it's absolutely straight as a string, and getting that bead of sealant on there is, when you set your frame on top of the sealant, you don't have to worry about coming in later with a shim or something to clean up this jam and get it perfectly level across the head, because when you put that shim in there, you're going to ruin that bead of sealant. The head is already level. Now let's look at a couple other things here. I like to install my frames bald. I don't mean without any hair. I mean without any brick mold or stucco mold installed because it's a lot easier to shim the jam and adjust the jam to fit the door. With the brick mold or the stucco mold installed, you have to install blind shims behind them. I mean the shims are going to bump up against the brick mold from the inside of the house. That's a pain in the neck. And with the brick mold or stucco mold installed, you have to play silly games with the flashing. You have to take two pieces of flashing and reverse them and stick them to each other. And then you have to stick them to the back of the, of the brick mold or the stucco mold in reverse order in order to integrate the flashing with the house wrap. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Working with a ball jam is much easier and much smarter. Just install the flashing, just like this on the wall, stick it to your house wrap and your jam, and leave it a quarter to a half an inch back from the face of the jam. So when you put the brick mold on, it covers the flashing. And that way you can flash the jam really easily, you can shim the jam really easily, and you can adjust the jam to fit the door. Makes a lot of sense, huh? You know, the whole subject of pre-installed brick mold and stucco mold is related to so-called progress in our industry. And in this case, I don't think it's progress at all. Obviously, whoever came up with the idea didn't have a lot of experience at installing doors because this is the right way, the easy way, the smart way, installing ball jams. I don't know when or where the notion first appeared. In California, where I learned to trade, the molding was never applied to the jams. The Finnish carpenters always did that. It's possible that pre-installed molding became popular because manufacturers and distributors were having too many callbacks or product problems related to installation issues. Maybe someone thought that installing a jam with moldings already applied meant the installer wouldn't need to be as experienced. But the truth is exactly the opposite and points to a critical issue in our industry. Making things simpler isn't always an effective solution, but training tradespeople in proper installation techniques is always an effective course. Let's move on to installing a full-size jam, and I'll show you another example of so-called progress in our industry. So this sill is level two. Just remember, this is a set. 
this is not a real home. So I couldn't put a can strip in here. I've got this floor that's actually installed in this set so we can use it at shows all over the country. That's why I demonstrated how to install the can strip or how to put a piece of padding down inside the rough opening so that you could level the rough opening before you set the frame. And we've done that here. This floor is perfectly level. I don't have to shim anything. So we're ready to correct the rough opening now in width. And that's a really critical thing to do too before you install the frame. When I say correct the rough opening, I mean bring it in to a reasonable size. Most openings these days are framed two to two and a half inches over the size of the door, which is way too big. There's way too much slop in that opening. So I like to bring them in until they're about an eighth of an inch over the OD of the jam. You'll notice I use a piece of plywood here as a shim. Some of them are half inch, some of them are a quarter, some of them are five eighths, but I cross cut them and I rip them so that they're all three inches by three inches. So no matter what direction I put them in, they always fit. Instead on this side of the opening, I put two quarter inch shims and then I measure the rough opening to find out how much more I have to shim it to bring it down so it's just an eighth of an inch over the size of the frame. So on this side, I put two quarter inch shims. The shims always go up near the top, not right against the header down about two or three inches from the header, but way up near the top of the jam and all the way down at the bottom of the opening. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cross string this opening before we bring the jam over. What we want to see is if these two lines are just touching each other when they cross. That means that the whole wall is in one plane. And this one is. It's pretty close because I made this set. I built this set and I made it almost perfect. But you don't usually run into a job site that's perfect like that. So this is your chance to fix any cross leg that's in the opening before you bring the frame over. And the way to do that is to try and move the walls just a little bit on each side. For instance, if the string isn't touching, if they're not touching right here, you can move that wall a little bit in this direction or in that direction. You can move this wall a little bit in either direction and a little bit at a time, you can bring the cross leg almost to the point where the strings are touching each other. You can correct cross leg too once you get the jam in the opening, but you want to get as much of it corrected as possible before you bring the frame over. You know, these Plaspro kits come knocked down. All the parts are separate. But most of the time, you won't receive them like that on your job site. Distributors who supply your lumber yard or door supplier, they like to pre-assemble the whole unit. And that's another notion of progress. I suppose the idea is that having the entire unit pre-assembled makes it easier to install and requires a less experienced carpenter. After all, with the doors already sealed and fastened in the frames, the whole unit's perfectly square and immobile, right? But the truth is, doors are never perfect, jams are never perfect, hinges are never perfect. And the only way to resolve all those small imperfections, all of which can add up to some serious problems with back-to-back -back mall units, is by adjusting the jam to fit the door. But if the doors are sealed and fastened to the jams, you can't adjust the jams much at all. Obviously, that's not progress. In fact, that's an example of how our craft has been dumbed down and critical techniques have been lost because of so-called progress. Just watch the technique I use to install this unit, you'll see exactly what I mean. First, I'm going to fasten this side light into the jam by throwing th screws through the back of the jam, not through the mole. I'm going to do that later. And I'm going to put one screw in the bottom here, too. And make sure I'm pushing that door in against the stop. 
There we go. So once the side lights are in the frame, I can pick up the whole frame and put it into the rough opening. And all I want is for the jam to be flush to the wall and I can pin it in place just like I do a single door. All I need is a couple of shims. So I'm going to take these two shims and I'm going to reverse one of them and slide them past each other so they're plenty skinny enough to get inside here and then tighten them up till they're just snug. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. There we go. That's plenty snug. And then I'll keep this jam flush and check the other side and make sure it's flush too. We'll get that good and snug and keep that flush. And now we're ready to install fasteners one and two. They both go in at the very top of the jam. And that's fastener number two. Now we're ready to hang the door. Let's stop right there for a second and just talk about progress one more time. Door manufacturers have come up with a way to adjust these hinges. I mean, they had to because the traditional way has been lost. Today we see more and more adjustable hinges on pre-assembled door units, and that is the new technique. Here's a typical adjustable hinge. With this hinge and an Allen wrench, you can raise the door or lower the door. With a screwdriver, you can move the door closer or further away from the hinge jam. Theoretically, you should be able to adjust the gaps around the door until they're perfect. But if you've had any experience with adjustable hinges, you've probably found that in some cases, no matter what you do, you can't make enough of good adjustments or just the right adjustments to get the doors to fit in the jams perfectly. However, if you install the doors yourself, the way carpenters used to install back-to-back -back mole units, you can make all those adjustments, every single one of them you need, exactly at the right time, and they're easy to make too. Now we got the door swinging on the jam, and we're ready to put in fasteners number three and four, but before we do, we want to make our final cross leg adjustment. Look at this. The top of the door is perfectly flush to the mole, but as you come down the door, you get down here further, look, it sticks out further right there, and further and further and further until you get all the way down to the bottom of the door, and it's sticking out a quarter of an inch past the mole right there. This is exactly what I've been talking about. We have to adjust the jam to fit the door. We can't adjust the door to fit anything. It's just a single flat slab. It's just a rectangle. You know, doors are warranted to be pretty flat. Within an eighth to a quarter of an inch on a 6-8 door, an 8-0 door isn't warranted for flat at all. You have to adjust the jam on an 8-0 door completely to fit the door. But what we're going to do here is check our cross leg before we put any more fasteners in. Before we put in fasteners number three and four, we can still move this jam. Now watch what happens right here. As I kick this jam into the wall, the door comes up flush almost against this jam right here. And if I take this jam and I pull it out from the wall just a little bit, now that door is perfectly flush. And that's what I'm talking about. And there's fastener number three. And there's fastener number four. Now the next thing you're going to wonder is, how come I'm using these big washer-headed screws to install this finish material? Just remember, this is a presentation. I'm going to be using this jam over and over and over again. And that's why I'm using these screws. If I was installing this thing in a home, I'd be using finish nails. So now, we've got the cross leg adjusted just right and it's time to finish the rest of the adjustments on this jam. And there's two left that are really important, and they're really similar to the adjustments we made on a single door, except this time we got a mall that we have to work with. The first adjustment is, notice how the door here has too tight of a gap right here at the top of the door, between the door and the mall, and at the bottom, the gap's even bigger, much bigger. You can also see that the gap above the top hinge is way too big, and there's a really good reason for that. Remember, every door you hang, 
The top hinge is under tension. The weight of the door is pulling down on the top hinge. The bottom hinge is under compression. The weight of the door is pushing against that hinge. Notice how much this jam deflects as I pull on the door. Now as it deflects, the gap above the top hinge increases and decreases. And I'm putting more and more pressure onto the hinge and it's deflecting too. Now all of this is mostly because the jam is moving. You know, this isn't a wood jam. This is a polyfiber jam. It's made by Plaspro. It's pretty handy to use. It won't ever check, it won't split, it won't crack, it won't warp, it'll last forever. And it's pretty tough too. It's actually a solid LVL inside the polyfiber that reinforces this back-to-back -back mall. So it makes it just as tough as a wood jam. But it's not gonna be structurally secure until we fasten this hinge with a long screw all the way through the back-to-back -back mall and into the side light. Now when we drive that screw in, we don't want to draw this jam tight to the side light. Notice how it has a little gap up here and a little gap down at the bottom. We want to maintain that gap. There we go. Now that's faster number five. Let's see how much we pulled that mole over to that side light. Oh, just a little bit. We've evened up this gap all the way. We decreased the gap right here. Look, that's nowhere near as big as it was. And now we have a nice gap on this side of the door, all because of that one simple adjustment. Now imagine what would you do if the side light were fastened into this unit and you didn't have the ability to tighten this mole up. You'd be out of luck. This is the last area that needs a major adjustment, and there's only one way to make this adjustment. It's the same way you fix a single door, but instead of putting a shim between the jam and the stud of the trimmer or the jack stud, you have to put the shim above the top hinge, right behind the mall, between the mall and the side light. And yep, that's another reason I like to install these side lights myself. So if I drive this shim in, watch what happens to this gap. Look, it's opening up. That is the only way you can adjust that gap and get it so it's the same size as the reveal between the door and the jam and the rest of the opening. Once you get that shim adjusted until it's just right, slice it off with a knife so it's flush, and then you can install screws through the other two hinges and fasten that mull to the side light permanently. You can do the same thing on this side. On this side, I like to put a long screw right behind the latch strike, and I like to put a couple of screws right behind the culon weather stripping too. If you have to put one right through the face of the jam, it's okay. You can putty over that as well. Now the last thing to do, once everything's fastened off permanently, is to trim out the side lights. Plaspro provides you with all that trim in their knockdown kit too, and it's even mitered all the way around. Now, some people don't like to see trim on top of their side lights. A lot of folks, and I'm one of them, would prefer to see an even reveal, a gap, all the way around the side light between the side light and the jam, about the same size as the gap you see between the door and the jam. And there's a really easy way to achieve that. You have to put shims in between the side light and the jam, but you have to cut them off and then shove them in there so that you can't see them from the face of the unit. Here's what I'm talking about. I use a pry bar to open up the gap between the side light and the jam. And then I use hotel card keys or pieces of Formica and I cut them into strips like this. You can put one or two on top of each other and put it back inside of here. And then push it all the way inside. Just like that. So it's not visible from the front of the jam. And then pull your pry bar out and make sure it's back in there before you fasten off the frame to the jam. You can also use a sharp wooden shim and put that between the side light and the jam. Just don't push it all the way in. Slide it out just a little bit. Slice it off so it's short and then push that back in 
and you won't be able to see it from the front of the opening either. And one more thing, before you put the side lights in, and I should have covered this earlier, you should run a bead of sealant right along the stop and then push the side light right into that sealant so it's water sealed from the outside. You'll still have plenty of time to adjust the jam to fit the doors and the side lights. I mean, you'll have a half an hour to an hour probably where you can still get a pry bar in there, get some shims in there, and get things just the way you like them. So why did I bother to show you installation and adjustment techniques that you can't even use with some units today? Well, sometimes you can order your side light door side light units, SDS units, without the side lights permanently installed in the frame, which is a good thing. You can install the side lights yourself and use that step to help adjust the jam to fit the doors. Unfortunately, these days, most manufacturers are shipping their pre-assembled units pre-finished too. You can't order jams bald even if you want to. What a shame.